Happy Wednesday, Grizzlies. So today we are going to finish off this book. Um, yesterday we saw that Moose decided he was going to try to write a letter to Al Capone in hopes that he might be able to help get um, Natalie into the Esther P. Marinoff school. So he writes a letter and uh, Piper's going to help him get that letter to him, to Al Capone. So the last two chapters, chapter 39, The Warden. Tuesday, June 11th, 1935. This last week, things have been better at my house. Natalie's back at Mrs. Kelly's. My mother is teaching piano lessons again, and she and my father are beginning to discuss what they will do next. And every day I wonder if we'll be going back to Santa Monica. It seems so long ago that we live there now. I'm not even sure I want to anymore. And I know moving back will be bad for Natalie. When I say, to, when I say goodbye to Scout and them on the last day of school, I get a stomach ache. I don't know if it's goodbye for the summer or goodbye for the rest of my life. I feel so lousy I don't say three words to anyone on the boat ride home. I hardly notice anything until I got off the boat. And then, all of a sudden, there are my parents, Natalie, Teresa, and Warden Williams. My parents never wait for me like this, and it's really strange to see the warden here. He's hardly ever down at the dock. The boat waits for the warden. The warden doesn't wait for the boat. Actually, the boat isn't supposed to wait for him either, but it always does. What's your dad doing here? I ask Piper. Beats me, Piper says, like this is no big deal, but she's chewing her gum at twice the usual speed. Guess what? My mother jumps up the second we're close enough to hear. No, wait, Teresa elbows in front of her. Let Natalie tell. Natalie frowns down at her feet. Go on, Nat, tell him, Teresa says. Eleven gulls, Natalie says. No, Nat, Teresa shakes her head. Eleven gulls, Nat says louder this time. No, I mean, you're... You're right, eleven gulls, Teresa says, but what else? Natalie's shoulders are hunched up like she's stuck in a shrug. She says nothing. She got into Esther P. Marinoff, Teresa announces with a big grin. Natalie! I wrap my arms around her in a spontaneous bear hug. I don't like that, I don't like that, Nat says, and I let go. Sorry, Nat, I say. Sorry, she says, moving her shoulders now like she's trying really hard to get them to fit. Sorry, 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 she mutters. Mr. Purdy called, my dad explains. He's decided to open another branch of the Esther P. Marinoff for older children, and he wants Natalie to be the first student. You're sure? I mean, this is for sure? I ask. My dad nods. Apparently, he's been planning this for some time, been waiting for the right moment to launch it. How come he didn't tell us that before? I say. My father looks sideways at my mother. My mother shakes her head. We don't know, she says. The warden clears his throat. I can feel the heat of his eyes on me. I glance at him and then away. A patch of sweat breaks out on my forehead. See, Moose, the warden says. Didn't I tell you your parents would work it out? He winks at me and smiles out of one side of his mouth. Then he turns his attention to Piper. Sweetheart, just wanted to tell you how proud I am of your grades. Straight A's again. He waves her report card in the air like he wants us all to see. Thank you, Daddy, Piper says as the warden puts his arm around her. I watch them walk up the hill. When they're out of earshot, I ask my dad, Just all of a sudden like that? My dad nods. He chews at his bottom lip. You know anything about this, Moose? He asks. No, I answer almost before he gets the question out. He nods like he believes me, then pops a toothpick in his mouth. Life is amazing, isn't it? You can't ever tell what will happen. Nobody knows until they go ahead and play the game. You can say that again, I say. Chapter 40, Al Capone Does My Shirts. Wednesday, June 12th, 1935. The next morning, I get up and pull a clean shirt off the hanger. As I shoot my arm through the sleeve, I hear something crackle. I dig my fingers in the pocket and pull out a torn scrap of brown paper. It's folded in half and in half again. Inside is one word scribbled hastily in pencil and underlined twice. Done, it says.